Thanks for tuning in today. In this video, I'm going to talk about shotgun shells and show you some of the specifics and in-depth details of them. See you in a second. Alright, so I think that the best place to start this discussion about shotgun shells is to begin with understanding how to read the numbers on a box of shells. So let's do that right now. Alright, so this is just a pretty standard box of shells here, but I want to walk you through what all of these numbers mean. So the 12 gauge simply refers to the gauge of shotgun that you're going to be using. 1200 feet per second is the feet per second of the shell. This is basically the velocity of the shotgun shell. The higher this number is, the more recoil you're going to have, but also the faster the shell, the shot in the shell is going to move. Two and three quarter length simply means the length of the actual shell. So if this had a three here, it would mean it was three inches long, but since this is two and three quarter, that means the shell is two and three quarter inches long. Three dram equivalent simply means that this shell is the equivalent of, in power of what a similar shell would have been whenever black powder was used. So it, would, it takes three drams equivalent of black powder to equal the power that is in this shell. One and an eighth ounce shot is simply how much shot is in it. So if this was one ounce, it would have less shot. If it was seven eighths ounce, it would have even less shot. One and seven and a half shot is the actual size of the shot BBs. So the, the higher this number is, the smaller the actual size of the shot BBs are. So if you have an eight size shot, then that's gonna be smaller than the seven and a half. All right, so now that we understand what the numbers on a shotgun shell box mean, let's move into a discussion of what you should key in on whenever you're picking your shells. I think there's three really important numbers here. Now all these numbers on a shotgun shell box are there for a reason, so they are important. But to the shooter, there are really only three that are going to be a huge, huge deal whenever you're picking your shotgun shell of choice. It's going to be your shot size, so seven and a half, eight, that number. It's going to be the amount of shot that is in there, so the ounces of shot, whether that be one ounce, one and eighth ounce, seven eighths ounce. And it's also going to be the feet per second, so the velocity of the shell, whether it be 1200 feet per second, 1145 feet per second, 1150, and so on. Let's discuss these numbers in very much detail. So I want to start here with the actual shot size. So seven and a half and eights, that's the two most popular two. You're pretty much not going to see anything else out there on the trap field. Every now and then you'll see somebody shooting eight and a half, but that's really pretty much it. It's the seven and a halfs and the eights. And I'm going to tell you, unless you are shooting long yardage handicaps, this isn't a huge deal to get hung up on. I've seen guys breaking with seven and a halfs and eights. I've broken with seven and a halfs and eights for singles and really back to about mid yardage, long yardage, somewhere in that gap. Now, I do think this is important if you are a new shooter, maybe even if you're just shooting singles, you need to understand this, that, you know, Usually in the trap shooting market, whenever you're buying shells, typically what you're going to see is a seven and a half shot size is going to be associated with a higher velocity shotgun shell. So you're not going to see as many eight size shot teamed up with like a 1250 feet per second shell. Now it does happen sometimes, and I'm not, I'm not saying that you're never going to run across it, I'm just saying that over the course of your life, you're going to see that the higher velocity shells are generally teamed up with seven and a half shot size. So that is why this is important, even if you're somebody that's just shooting 16 yard line singles. Because using the eight shot size is going for the most part to mean you're shooting a lower velocity shell. Now, like I said, there are exceptions to this rule, so you really want to pay attention to that feet per second marker as well. But Shooting the eights or seven and a half for singles isn't really going to matter. I shoot seven and a half in my reloads. I shoot it for everything in practice. Just because of the simplicity of only having to do with one shot size, it's made my life so much easier on reloading. However, in competition, I use eight shot size for my first shot of doubles and singles, and sometimes my second shot of doubles as well. Now, I always use seven and a half for my handicaps, but I'm shooting long yardage handicaps, so I would say you don't really need to worry about eights versus seven and a half, 
unless you're shooting mid to long yardage handicaps, you know, that, that's really the only instance you're going to have to worry about that. Like I said, you want to pay attention to it though, simply because of the velocity. So whenever I see a seven and a half feet per second shell, generally I'm thinking that it's going to be a higher velocity, which means more recoil, which is why you want to pay attention to that. All right, so let's go ahead and move right into talking about the second of these three numbers, and that is the amount of ounces of shot in a shotgun shell. So you typically are going to see seven eighths ounce, one ounce, and one and eighth ounce in the trap shooting world. Now really I can limit this down to two, I mainly see one ounce and one and eighth ounce. Every now and then you'll see somebody shoot seven eighths ounce, so I'm going to go ahead and talk about that as well. Long yardage handicaps, let's start here. There's no way I would shoot anything but a one and eight, one eighth ounce. There's just not really enough shot in the others for me to feel confident that I'm going to have as good of a chance breaking the target. This is something that I've picked the brains of several really good shooters, Hall of Famers and All-Americans and asked them and they feel like for the most part that the more shot you can get in that shotgun shell the better off you're going to be for having a good chance to break the target especially in long yardage handicaps. So I definitely would not consider shooting a 7 8 ounce shell. Personally like I said I wouldn't shoot anything but 1 and 1 8 in handicaps long yardage. But I will say this, the difference between one ounce and one and eighth ounce is a little bit more similar. So it's more of a personal preference thing. I'm not going to recommend it for long yardage handicaps, but if you want to try it for, say, singles and doubles, it is more of a personal preference thing between those two. Now, seven eighths ounce. I've personally never seen a shooter break consistently high scores that shoots the 7 eighths ounce load. Now, that being said, there are some people that I've seen have a relative amount of success with it, but it's not something that I'm personally going to recommend just because you look at the great shooters, the great trap shooters, they're not shooting it. And I don't know anybody that does shoot it, like I said, that has broke those consistent scores. I've never really had great success with it myself. So I'm not going to recommend it because there's just too few of the great shooters that are consistently breaking the high scores. If it was a really good deal, they would be shooting it. So I'm not a huge proponent of 7 8 ounce. There's just not enough shot in the actual shell in my opinion. I actually just saw a guy switch from 7 8 going to a 1 ounce and a 1 8 ounce and his scores went up immediately. So. I'm not a huge fan of 7 8 ounce, just to be honest, it, it's, it's just not my personal thing. Experiment with it. If you're one of the people that does have success with it, then I might try it, but I'm not going to recommend to anyone that they switch over to that from the other two. Now shooting 1 ounce or 1 and 8 ounce from the 16 yard line, like I said earlier, it is a personal preference thing. I personally prefer 1 and 1 8 ounce. That's my personal preference. I'm gonna shoot that for everything. I've tried one ounce quite a bit, and I just don't like it as well. It's just, I like the extra shot in the shell. So for me, that's a little bit more preferred. I feel like I have a higher chance of breaking the target. And the people that I have asked about this that are really good shooters, they say the exact same thing. They prefer that extra shot in the shell. I feel like that gives them a better chance at breaking the target. So that's my thoughts on that issue there. And let's move right into the third and last topic of these three numbers and that is velocity. Now this is huge because you don't want to get into shooting too much velocity, especially if you're a younger shooter, you're new to the game. This may be something that you're confused on is what is velocity and how does it directly impact me as a shooter. So the higher the velocity, the more recoil you're going to have. So it's like putting extra wear and tear on your body whenever you don't need it if you're shooting too much velocity. So 16 yard line singles, let's start there. I don't think you need to be shooting anything above 1145 feet per second. You're just not doing yourself any good. You're putting too much extra strain on your body. 1145 feet per second is plenty, plenty of velocity, guys, to break the target consistently. I've seen guys average over 99 over the course of an ATA season shooting 1145 feet per second. And they just, they, they hammer the target. They're fundamentally sound. So 
it doesn't impact them. You know, shooting that 1,200 feet per second, it's just not worth the extra recoil, and definitely not shooting 1,250. Those are handicap loads, second targeted double loads on 1,200 feet per second possibly as well. Now, speaking of doubles, let's move right into that. Same principle applies with the first shot of doubles. You want the least recoil that you can get away with. So I'm going to recommend 1145 feet per second here as well. Now, the reason you want to do this is kind of twofold on this one. Number one, you don't want the extra wear and tear on your body. Same as singles. You don't want that extra wear and tear whenever you don't have to have it. Number two, you want to have really good control of your gun going into that second target. So I don't want to get up there, call for the first target, so I'll call for the pair, go to that first target, and then just get absolutely bumped back and be totally out of control going to the second target. That's not setting me up well for success long term in doubles. So I want to have the ability to be in control of my gun. Shooting at 1145 feet per second shell is definitely going to give me the ability to be in control of my gun more. The second tar target on doubles, I would say you could shoot 1145 feet per second, 1200 feet per second. It's your preference really between those two. I wouldn't get above that 1200 feet per second threshold just because it's too much wear and tear on your body. You really don't need it. And guys, really, you know, I'm talking about wear and tear long term. So, you know, 20, 30, 40 years down the road of your shooting career, maybe even 10 years down the road in some cases, it could be as small as that, that you're going to feel that. But also the short term, so the tournament that you're actually shooting at. Let's say you know the grand is going on right now. You have you're going to shoot you know two to two thousand to twenty five hundred shells if you shoot the whole thing or more. That's counting kind of you not being in any shoot offs, not being shooting any practice at all. You're just going to shoot the base events. You're going to shoot that much or more, and you're going to feel that fatigue at the end of the tournament if you're shooting too much velocity which in turn is going to give your competition an advantage because they're going to be physically fresher so you know shooting that many shells over the course of two weeks is physically demanding because you, know, you think about it maybe you shoot two to three thousand in a month if you're shooting a lot you're going to shoot that in a month i mean you, you really have to be shooting a lot all of a sudden you're going to shoot that in like two weeks so that's a huge huge difference on the impact of shooting on your body so you want to shoot in a manner that takes care of your body in a manner that you don't shoot that extra velocity when you don't need it because long term you're going to feel the effects of it short term during this tournament that you're actually in you're going to feel the effects of it as well so moving right into the handicaps equation of this you don't really need to shoot more than a 1200 feet per second shell until you get back to the 23, 24 yard line. Somewhere in that in that range. I started shooting a nitro shell, a 1235 feet per second shell, 1235, 1250. I would kind of vary it up there shooting those two. Shooting that shell back whenever I got to the 24 yard line. That's whenever I felt like I started needing the extra velocity. So short yardage. Um, honestly, back to back to 21 yard line, you can probably just get away with shooting your single shell, and you're going to do just fine with that. Once you get back to the 21, I would bump it up to 1,200 feet per second, and just because that's going to give you more confidence, it's going to give you a little bit more. To the, you're getting to the point that you're going to need that extra velocity. It's actually going to benefit you, and so I would go with that. And you know, maybe you're somebody, this isn't an exact deal for everybody. So for me, it was a 24 yard line. Maybe for you, it's a 23 yard line. Maybe for you, it's a 25 yard line. And maybe for you, you never quit shooting those 1200 feet per second shells. Maybe you're able to be successful with those the whole time, even shooting at the 27 yard line. If so, do that. But kind of play with it. I wouldn't go up to the extra velocity unless I felt like it was necessary for me to break the highest score that I can possibly break. Once again, I want to put the minimal amount of wear and tear on my body that I have to for both my long-term benefit, being able to shoot for a long, long time, and the short-term benefit of being fresh at the tournament that I'm currently at. So guys, that's pretty much my thoughts on shotgun shells. An in-depth look here. I hope this helped you out if you're confused on this topic. I hope this clarified some things for you. And remember one thing, the shotgun shells are not going to make you a great shooter. They're not going to make you a bad shooter. 
as long as you're following the general guidelines that are accepted both in this video and in the trap shooting community, you're going to be fine. If you're not shooting too much recoil, if you're not shooting too little velocity, then you're going to be good. If you're shooting the right shot size, don't try anything too crazy. Just find the shell that works for you and stick with it for as long as you possibly can. As long as that shell is in production, stick with it. If it's working for you, then that's great. If you have confidence in it, that's great. But also understand that shell doesn't make you a great shooter. So, you know, if you were to give a Hall of Fame shooter two different shells from two different brands and they're exactly the same velocity and everything, I would guarantee you they could go out there and they could shoot just as well with either one of them because ultimately what makes them a great shooter is their ability to execute consistently and focus in on the fundamentals to get the job done. Thank you guys so much for watching today. I really appreciate it. You can subscribe to my channel here. You can check out a couple more videos here. And we'll see you guys in the next one. Have a great rest of your day.